Hi, I'm Angela Greenick. Welcome to my program today, Training to Rain. I'm in Henderson, Kentucky, with Pastor Shane and Judy Amar. And I am so honored to be here. Listen, God's looking for the purebreds. He's looking for those that are the forerunners. We met each other a few years ago. We've been superhero friends ever since. And um, I'm just honored to be at the church. We've only been here under like 20 hours or something, but my God, are we having a good time. Amen. So Shane, now, how long have you got all been here now? You've been here for how long in this area? We've been here for around 11 years. Wow. Yeah. You're doing such an amazing job. You have such a great church. When you hear their worship, you will want to weep and want to know, how do we get this presence? And uh, so you play guitar. Yes. And what kind of guitar is that? The, the, the name of the guitar? No, no, no. Is it a bass? Is it like it's, it's just an electric guitar. See, most people are like, we don't know what it is, but I'll just tell you what, when you hit that thing, it bang, things in the spirit start to ricochet and move. Amen. And you're such a powerful preacher, but you are such love. I mean, you know, you just have such a love and, and a wisdom um, that surpasses just being here for 11 years as a pastor. That's why I was asking you how long you've been here. And so what is it that has um, caused you um, to put your hands to this plow, this work? Because you're in a really hard area. Like, most yes. people may think Kentucky's not hard, but it is. Yes. Um, well, first of all, she's going to help me here. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's all good. First of all is the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The call of God on, on my life. Yes. Uh, my, my wife both. Uh, you know, that's the thing that has, has kept us going is that, you know, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what it looks like, regardless yeah. of how bad it feels or how good it feels or yeah. whatever. We're here. God exactly. called us here and we're here yes. until he calls us somewhere else or exactly. he tells us to do something else. So, but there have been many times and we started church here when we started the church here, we did it the old way. Okay. You know, they call it pioneer evangelism. You go into a community, you move in, and you become a missionary there. Not Amen. like, you know, like, and there's nothing wrong with the way like, no, they're doing no. stuff now. Yeah, you know, yeah. But a lot of times they spend a lot of time preparing and planning and you know, having a launch day and all that stuff, that's all good. But yeah, we yeah. did it the old-fashioned way. We just came here. God called us here. We came here. We moved here. And we built a church. See, this is what I love about you guys is because you're pioneers. And you have to persevere through the hard times. And I like that it's old school. And so you're the pastor, but you're also a pastor. And you're one of the worship leaders, but you're and fire like you cannot believe and uh, they both are together the, the, like the dynamic duo but this is Jeannie and so Jeannie what what is it that just moves your heart for your community because I want to tell you right now a lot of pastors are having an extremely hard time and especially as a woman because we're women if you haven't noticed and <laughs> right Amen. yes and so what is it that moves you and compels you to keep going um, I would have to say just my relationship with the Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the love of the love of Christ. Um, he brought me out of a pit. Um, you know the love of Christ. And whenever the Lord filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost years ago, I asked Him one thing. I said, "Never let me forget where You brought me out." Of. Come on. And um, and you know what? The Lord's never forgive it would let me forget that. And that also is my drive. I see people that are lost. And um, and I just want everybody to have that free gift. I want everybody to be free and delivered and set free. Jeez. And um, so that's my that's my drive. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 all about Jesus. And if it's, everything's about Jesus, then it's about this lost, dying world. Yes. And is. we have a responsibility and a job to do. Oh yes, we do. Amen. You know what I think is so interesting because you know you both are. You both are one because you're married, so you have one heart. But I just see the dynamics um, as pastors and as ministers and as teachers and evangelists and, and your worshipers. I mean, you're doing the whole thing. But I just see the beauty of, of both of you together as one. And that's what makes this work. Amen. You know, because so many times there are pastors that are watching us right now, you are hurting because you're in division, you got things going on. And, you know, and it's hard, I think, too, when you're a pioneer. Because I'm a pioneer, and some of my pioneering doesn't make sense to people until I get into it. Mm -hmm. And then it all starts to make sense. And Shane, you touched on something about 
coming in to pioneer and work here the old way. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe the old way is really pretty much the only way. Because when we got brought into this world of God, which, you know, mine's been like 35 years now. But I was brought in to go in and get trained up and raised up and evangelized. And my God, we just did it. And, you know, sometimes we have such big expectations that God's going to do something and then people get really disappointed. And so they always go, Andrew, what thinks God's going to do? I said, he always shows up. He's God, we're not. And I'm just going to go because I don't have five years to plan something anymore. I just don't have that time. You know, and so what is it that, what, I know it's not like a model or anything like that, but what is it that makes this work? Well, <clears throat> we talk about life-giving ministry, empowering leadership. Come on. Uh, we share that with the congregation. Yeah. Because we understand it. My wife and I understand yeah. it because that's, she has gifts that I don't have and I have gifts that yeah. she doesn't have. And many times what happens is in couples is they get jealous of each other. Come on. Or they're in competition with each other or one person that, you know, wants the whole show. We're a team. Yeah. Amen. We're, we're a team and we work together. And Amen. we've always understood that. And we need each other. Yeah. You know, the areas where I'm more laid back in, you know, she'll, she'll be, she's more able to, you know, to come up front and to yep. grab the bull by its horns kind of thing. Yep. And then vice versa. There are yeah, areas yeah. where I'm going to be stronger in and, uh, and she may be more laid back yep. in. And we just, we, we use our gifts together because they harmonize. That's what the body, that's that's the body. That's, that's that the is body. the body of Christ. Work. Everybody does their part. I love that you said that you're empowering. Yes. Because we're in Kentucky and you're a woman. And a lot of people down south, they still look at it as a man's world. And it is a man's world, but it also is a woman's world. And uh, God created all of us, you know. And I always say this, but, you know, the Holy Spirit's not male nor female, so we better start getting in that river and swimming in it mm -hmm. and going further. And uh, so what is some of the things that, um, you know, that just moves you, Jeannie? Because when you start to worship, you ricochet things in the Spirit. And I see you, like, violently go to the throne, and you're violently pushing darkness out of the way. You know, there's something that, that moves you. Like, you become this whole other person. Like, Jeannie, Jeannie and Laura doesn't exist. I don't see you when you're up here. I see, like, a, a cloud of wind around you. What is it? What, did, what got you to this point? Because I think this is a key for everyone. It doesn't, it's not about a male or a female. It's not about a worship and a pastor. It's about pursuing the presence. It's about going after him. He he wrecked me. Yeah. He changed he's changed me and he's still continuing to do that. But I think the key is this. Every day I have to go to the foot of a cross and I have to die. Come on. I have to pay I have to pick up my cross. That's what he says. And number two, I have to pick up that sword, that word of God. Yep. Come on. That is implanted in my heart. Yeah. And um, he's worthy of our praise. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, I just, kept, I'm in love with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? I'm in love with him. Yeah. He's so amazing. He is so amazing. It's, it's, it's not, it's beyond, it's beyond our vocabulary. It is. Amazing. And um, I want more of him continually. Yes. And, uh, but again, I believe um, it's a place of keeping yourself humble. Yeah. Um, you know, we have to stay humble. Mm -hmm. um, we're nothing without him, oh, yeah. and um, and so um, we've got to continue to stay in that place every day of our lives. It's in that place is whenever whenever the anointing will begin to flow yeah, yeah, yeah. in humility. It's in that place whenever you will listen to that still small voice, yeah. and he'll say to you, "I want you to go get get in your car and on and, and pull in the gas station." And there, standing a young girl that doesn't weigh seventy pounds that needs Jesus that's on drugs. Yep. That's barefooted. What are we going to do? Are we going to drive by? Are we going to follow after his spirit and listen to his voice and go in and begin to minister? That's what it's all about. It, it really is, isn't it? It, it, it is. It's not hard. No, it is not hard. Um, the, you know, the scripture says in the Gospels, Jesus says, whenever they deliver you up, take no thought for what you'll speak, for the Holy Ghost will give you the words. Yeah. What you preach today, powerful. It's just un amazing what trans form today mm -hmm. but you were you were you were speaking of and, and, and talking about um was it in Folsom when I talked about Folsom Street? Yes yeah, yeah. and just just going out and ministering and 
That's okay with you. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what it is, though, Jamie? Here's what it is. Yes. We talked about doing simple. And I took people out on Folsom Street for a three room and a tent, and they got real scared. Yes. And I said, the Holy Spirit, that's what you're really saying. Yes. The Holy Spirit's in you. Yes. And you've got to, you know, it's almost like God saying, I I'm just daring you to get out of the boat and walk on that water. Amen. Do you Amen. Feel that? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want those opportunities. Oh, my gosh. Do we ever. Amen. But you got to step in to get those opportunities. Yeah. And, you know, earlier I was going through with the, to the church and stuff, and I saw the... People in your church have this t-shirt. It's called Search and Rescue. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh. That's what the River of Life Church is. I love the name of this church. Because it's really a river of living waters. God's a literary show. And every time I come here, I get refreshed. And it doesn't always happen in places. People may not think that's weird or something. But, you know, you go in and you're, you, yes, you bring the anointing. Yes, you bring the fire and the winds. But there's something, Larry will say sometimes, he'll go, you, you come back refreshed when you're with Jeannie and Shane and Mara. I'm like, I do, don't I? Or he'll know I'm talking to you. He said, you were talking to Jeannie. And I go, uh-huh. He goes, ha, ha I know you have, hallelujah, because he does it all the time. He, I love it, too. No, he's really good at it, too. And I love what he does, though, because he says, you know what it is? He knows. Because you know what? The body of Christ needs each other. That's what you were saying. And we're about search and rescue. And God is wanting to enlarge the territory. Yes. And I want to go back to this word about the river of life. We were here last night and I looked up and I saw it. The river of life. And it looks like something's falling. And I thought, Lord, that is, that is the tears of heaven. You know, it's watering the earth. The waters are watering the earth. And it's watering this river, the Holy Spirit. And it's rising up in Ezekiel. Yes. It said it went from your ankles to your knees and then you start swimming. And I believe that God wants us to swim even greater in a greater distance. I feel like, you know, there's a major triathlon out here tomorrow. I don't know if y'all know that. Yes. In Kentucky. And I feel like we're in a triathlon. And we are swimming beyond comprehension mm -hmm. and pushing our bodies to the limits sometimes. I think sometimes we don't want to push ourselves because we don't want the exhaustion or the hurt or whatever. But, you know, I said, Larry said, you're right, you're tired. I said, well, I'm going to go hang out with she and Jeannie and the family and the kids, and, and I'm going to step in that church. And as soon as I walk through that corridor, poof, the anointing hit. Amen. And when the worship hit last night, I thought I was going to fall out and die right there in front of that altar because there is a sound that's released because your sound comes in here and releases. And I love how water and sound vibrate together. Is that right? There's some, I, I don't know about it. I feel like, is there something about that? Well, I know uh, the sound is vibrations. Yeah, okay. So, you know, when, if it's like when you throw a pebble <clears throat> in the water. Yeah. It ripples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Well, I guess that's what it is because every time I look at you like a sound and an effect. And, and it's, it's a ripple effect. Maybe it's a ripple effect. That's right. And Amen. so, um, but you're such a transformer. You know, you really are. You're a transformer. And I believe that not only are you pioneers, but I feel like God is really trying to get us back to the simplicity of the gospel. Amen. I've ever thought that. And it is about soul winning. And it is about stopping for the one, yes. like at the gas station, Amen. and trusting God yeah. that where he's taking you out of, he's going to take you to where you need to be. We are on 10, 10 of 2015, and there's a paradigm shifting hitting in the spirit realm. And God said, what once was will not be anymore. Amen. And there is such a move of God, and God's been looking. Like, I've been up on my wall all year and can't come down Nehemiah 6. But when I stepped in here last night, I heard, daughter, you're entering Nehemiah 7. And he said, I've got citadels. This is a citadel. This is a safe place where people can come and are search and rescued and can come. Like you guys, 
they have my very first Deliverance Healing Center. Yeah. And I'm so proud to say that because we have them now all over America and overseas. But this is the first. And other people go, I thought I was your first. I said, oh, no. That's Pastors Jeannie and Shane Omar. They're our first one. And, and people say, what is it about them? Because, you know, it's your first baby, if you will. And they say, what is it about them? I go, because I know that not only have they stood the test of time, but I know that they work together as one and that their marriage is great and their ministry is amazing because you care and your family is off the flipping charts. Wait till you meet the kids. Oh my God. And they're purebreds for the kingdom. And the worship that comes out of here, like there's a new sound of heaven being released on earth. And I just, every time you guys start to worship, I see colors like, it's almost like a portal. It is a portal of heaven coming down. And I see shafts of light of color just going up into the heavens. And then I see sound coming back down. And then your son Casey, because his percussion hits certain beats and, and demonic is pushed out. And then something else will try to come in and you're on it. And then you're hitting that electric guitar and you're sending bolts of lightning out to the, That's why I asked you about your guitar. Because I see bolts of lightning shoot off of your guitar when you start to play. And I'm going to say this because this says a lot to me. But because we're friends, we're family, but we're friends on Instagram. So you had put some, we put something up. You put something up. You were just having some fun in your office playing guitar with me. Yes. And I said, Larry, I want you to listen to this. And he goes, Is it worship? I'm like, No, listen. And as soon as I put you on, and this is true, my husband, he started to weep. <laughs> and he said, I I've been looking for the sound. Oh. I've been looking for the sound. And I almost went to cry saying it. He said, You think the next time you go, can I really come? Because he doesn't really want to go a lot of places because he has a full time job, he's very little vacation time. And so I really need to come next year when you go. And no man, like, babe, can you please come? He's like, no, I just can't. But he's asking me because he heard the sound and he said he's so pure and he's so humble and he makes room for people. You know, I just, it's true, right? And so I just started on our network on Kingdom Invasion Media Army on AngelaGreedy.com as you see crossing through. Go to Kingdom Media, you're going to see the money, you're going to see that they have their own channel which I'm so honored to have you on there. But we started Engage Worship, and I'll tell you what it hit me. Do you know why I started the worship channel? You don't know, but I want to tell you, is it okay? Yes. Um, my husband heard you play, and when he started to weep, I, I feel like there's so many out there that are worshipers, and all they want to do is engage God in worship. And so, is it? it's true, right? Yeah, and, Okay, and so the Lord said, I want you to release a worship channel. I'm like, oh, okay. And he says, you're going to call and engage worship. I mean, he gives me stuff real quick. And so I said to Larry, as soon as he, he watched you, and he did weep. And after he walked away for a bit, I got on my knees and I started to weep. And when I cry, it's not like, it's not normal for me. When I weep, I'm weeping. I feel for heaven. Okay? Sure. So I started to weep. And the Lord said, there are so many wounded worshipers out there that just so want to worship God. And they may not be the best singer or sound or worshiper, but God, they have so much value in the kingdom. And so the Lord said, on 10, one, you're going to release it because 10 is the law, and the number 11 is judgment, bring me down and bring deliverance. God says, I'm releasing my law through engaged worship, and worshipers from all over the world are going to have a chance to do worship. Wow. And I have a guy who's in his 80s, and he is so beautiful. He releases such an anointing and major surgery. He can barely sing anymore. And he is releasing a sound. And he was like, I don't think I can do it. I said, well, then you're just going to lip sync, Ted. I don't really care. I said, because all you have to do is step in front and open up your mouth. It doesn't matter if you hit that note. It doesn't matter. But it matters is that you move. And I just want to let you know that you have had such an impact on my family, both of you, and on my husband, in just being who you are. That it launched a worship media. So I just want to thank you for launching that worship. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Because you didn't know the story until no, just now. No. I, wanted, I didn't know if I'd ever even tell you, but the Lord said, no, you need to let him know that you release the worship. Well, you know, there's a difference between what we have a lot in the church. 
in the 90s, we had all of a sudden, of course, we come out of a Pentecostal background, so we oh. always rocked out in church. Come on. We always had, <laughs> yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, right. But in the 90s, there, you know, there were revivals that were sweeping out. Yeah. There was a big revival of all of a sudden, everybody wanted to get the, the guitar involved. All denominations started yeah. jumping on the bandwagon. And now we see it's good and it's bad. We see all of the technology and everything that's made its way into the church, yes. all the musicians, and we get caught up in performance a lot of times. And the, word, the, the you know, scripture talks about playing skillfully before the Lord. So it's important. You know, we want to be excellent at what we do. We want to be skillful. But it's not about the performance. First and foremost, what a lot of what the missing ingredient is the anointing. Amen. You can be anointed. I, I, I play I also play I play gigs on the side, yeah, you know, and I go and I play local places you. and stuff like that, and e even in secular music. Good, I'm thank you. Person I can play in secular venues, and when I start playing the, that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking about the anointing. I'm thinking, you exactly. know, because people feel that. Oh, they do. You, you over listen to a good CD of a good band up. that uh, or a good group that yep. is anointed. My That's why a lot of times the live music time. in church when it's recorded, you hear it's like, wow. It's anointed because yeah. it's there, you know. And that's the difference between just being a musician and then also playing skillfully. You know, David, whenever he played, you know, yeah. whenever he played his instrument, evil spirits would flee. And that's the same thing. That's what we understand. That's why during our worship service, a lot of people come in. They're, they're like, well, we've never experienced anything like this before. You know, usually you go in, they do three songs, and, you know, people may lift their hands up. But we know that during... The worship time, and uh -huh. the music, and the singers are on the front line, Jesus. and that's going up before the Lord. Yeah. There is the people that are in bondage, so that Come bondage on. can be broken. Amen. People that need deliverance, deliverance time of stuff happens oh, yeah. in an anointed atmosphere of praise yes. and worship. And when we're lifting up the name of Jesus, stuff happens. People are hitting the altars, and you know, it's, it's crazy. It's awesome. It's and that's so what amazing. we've always had that culture here. It's nothing that. You know, it's nothing that we thought, well, this is going to be the formula. We've just done it, and that is, that's kind of the way it's always been. And I think that's, you know, that's a missing ingredient in a lot of churches. Yeah. They may have good musicians, but do we have the anointing? Yeah, is it performance-based or is it anointed-based? Yeah, exactly. right? And then, you know, so, but I, that, I think it's so interesting. I, I believe this is why I go home refreshed when I leave here, is because I don't have to fight so hard. Yes, I have to fight sometimes in the spirit realm to push darkness backward to help us to get to that next level. All of us, not just you, me too. But I go back home refreshed because I, I, I'm with people that know how to usher in the anointing, usher in the worship, and can also do the job, you know, and are still about search and rescue. They're still about the poor. Like, share a little bit this morning. You were talking about being in Africa. Because uh, we have team, well, Pastor Joel and Jen Chuk, he's from Nigeria, and he is over there right now because he has an orphanage, but we need to build a school. And after I finished our school in Mexico, uh, within a half an hour, he was weeping. He's like, I got, can you help us build a school, please? Which will have a kitchen, and we're going to build, you know, and really build a village and pay it for, for the widows. Because it's really important, you know, because what you do for somebody else, God, it happens for you. And... And so when you share a little, share about Africa and that experience, because I, I think it's really vital, because you're amazing, you know, a prophetess, you're a worshiper, seer, you know, because you are, and you're in, you know, but you're doing everything else too. Right. But then God stops you as you go into Africa. Can you share that story? Um, well, just absolutely. I just love South Africa. Um, I have a heart for the people. I love the people. Um, but the first time that we were in Johannesburg, South Africa, I'm driving down the highway and I look over and there are three-year-old children that are crawling in garbage bins. And I just, all I could do is begin to weep. And um, I'm like, Lord, um, you know, I came home and my poor children never got to leave a green bean on their plate after, I, after that, oh, that trip. Right. It wasn't it. Um, you know, I mean, it's just... Um, but I mean, my heart is just, um, they're in desperate need. And, yeah. and the, the, the people, they're, they're so hungry for God. 
<laughs> you know, you want to be around people that are hungry for Jesus, oh, but they want more. And that's what you see in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want, they want more of Him. I watched, we watched in the service the first time that we went, and we had a, we held a Holy Ghost crusade. Come on. And um, I watched people in the offering come down and take their shoes off. I, I watched them take their take their top coat off, or if they had a watch on, they took it off and they they put it in the offering plate because they didn't have anything else. But they gave, they gave, and here we are in America, so rich and so richly with goods. I, I but again back to South Africa. I love I love the people. I always had a heart and a hunger for them, yes. and um, it's never left me. And I went back and, and done um, conferences where I would preach at the conferences, yep. and um, and the other ladies would do the hospital, you know, put on blood pressure, check all their vitals and things like that. Yep. It's amazing. I mean, we've been to Zambia, so uh, we love Africa. And it's amazing. And we want to be a part of what you're doing. Well, yeah, because we're one anyway. We're, Amen. we're building it together. Like, Amen. I'm going to tag Yuri, just go, Amen. because I can go do something else. Because that's how this kingdom has to be. And I can tell you, I showed uh, I showed you both the pictures with the kids and yes. stuff. And I'm so happy to have a pair of flip-flops. Yes. You know, and they're so happy that they're getting a school. And, you know, they've been trying to do this for years, to be honest. They would tell you when you meet them. They would say, you know, we've been trying to... Uh, the Mexico um, that we did, going into Mexico, Pastor uh, David had said to me, and he said, you can't believe how many ministers have come through here, and they said they'd be back to build, and not one of them cared about the kids or came back ever. But you have such integrity. You came back, and you were a woman of your word. I'll be seeing you soon. Have an amazing week. Remember that you are incredible, and God has a purpose and a plan for your life. That's why I do this training to reign, R-E-I-G-N, because we are called to reign, subdue, and take ground for the kingdom. Don't forget that, you know, in the weeks to come, you, you're just going to go click on there on our channel, our network, because we have a lot of ministers coming on. But they, they already have their channel up. Go on, listen to the worship, the preaching, the teaching, the evangelizing, because God's getting ready to blow this place up. So have a great week, and I'll see you soon.